Coming up in tonight's episode, I sabotage my workmate's van. Perfect, that is exactly lovely, it's just. I get to grips with my barcode scanning system. Oh, come on! And I get out of my depth, changing a fuel filter. Tea, coffee, oil and filter change. Oh, it's pissing, it's pissing, it's pissing, it's pissing, it's pissing I can't. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. Thomas Nagy, mechanic. <laughs> Bring your vehicles here for a complete service and free tea and muffins. Everybody, welcome back. Now, in one of the uh, houses which we rewired a couple of a uh, couple of months ago now, actually, uh, we found. <laughs> this sounds really silly. We found a Ribden dotted Passant intensity condom uh, behind one of the beds, and for some reason, Joe decided to put it in James's wallet, uh, thinking he would go home and his missus would see it. And uh, anyway, yes, that happened. And it ended up that uh, one of them decided it'd be a good idea to put it in the glove box of my van. So I'm going to retaliate. This is uh, James's van. And I was thinking, because I know his missus uses the van at the weekend, I'm just going to pop it up here above the vanity mirror, because women always use the vanity mirror. So she'll come in, they'll be driving along and <laughs> boom! Perfect. That is exactly lovely. It's just... Oh. Don't tell me you wouldn't do it. This is everybody would do these sort of things to get their mates in trouble. So, uh, right now that's done. Uh, very important. That's maximum maximum importance of the day. I wanted to make sure that was done for the weekend. But uh, what I wanted to discuss uh, on today's video was the uh, stocking system. Actually, we've had. I'll show you now. We've had a little update. What we have done is we finally got the stock system up and running. So you know how we were talking about uh, we we need a way to keep on track of the amount of stock that we've got. We can't ever have it so something runs out. You've got to be able to have a way that Sarah or Vanita in the office know when something's running low, they can order in, it comes in without any of us having to do anything. And we have figured out. We now have our little barcode scanner. And it, me and the camera guy, or the camera guy and I, I should say, spent last Friday setting this up. And it's quite cool. It's actually set up. We just haven't got, we haven't got the screen up here working. But this is it, and this laptop will now stay here all the time. And I'll give you a demonstration. I will just show you briefly how this works. I'm actually going to book some stock back in. So this van's just come back off a job. James has actually just finished a job and he's gone home now. But this is what he's unloaded. All of this actually has to go back on the shelf. And this area here is what I was saying. This is when stock, when the boys come back with stock that they haven't used. So they've over, they've taken too much out or they just didn't need it. They just bring it back here. If they haven't got time to book it back in, they just leave it here in this area and all the stuff here has to be booked back in. I'm sure that road sweep knows what I'm recording. He's like, let's make as much noise as possible. So I'll just demonstrate how it works. So you take your, you take your basket like this. So we'll book stock back in. So we have to book in three of these. So we go over here to where they sit. Where's their home? Here. That's it. One, two, Three. That's those booked back in. It's really, it works now. We've really got it. We've got it down pat. And then you just keep doing it with everything else that's in the tub. So we've got a four going switch, one going switch, and a two four going switches. Okay. So we'll start with a one going switch. Goes back on there. Four going dimmer, and a four going switch. And that's it, those are all booked back in. So that's the idea. And this system is constantly updated. And it just, every time you scan it, it just updates on the computer. And that's basically it. I'll, go, I'll do the rest later, but that's the idea. And then in the mornings when they want to book stock out, they just do it the reverse process. They just book stock out instead. But what we like about this is it gives you all the prices for everything. It tells, it gives us a stock value of how much stock we're carrying at the moment, which is really important for your tax return, for your assets and stuff. That's it, click close. And that's it. This was the other thing I wanted to talk about. So like now it's a Friday, everyone's gone home. Uh, James is coming back in a minute to take this van away. He's just disappeared to go and get a bottle of pop or something. But these three vans are here at the moment. And generally what happens is once everyone leaves on a Friday, it's basically down to, not down to me because I choose to do it, but it's just getting the vans sorted for the following week. So I won't actually open should I show you? This van's just come back from Sortimo, actually. It's got the nice Sortimo roller rack on the back. This has just come back from them. Um, I'll give you a quick, just, just a, 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 little, a, little, a little look. Done. 
There'll be a proper video of that one coming up. But what I was going to say, one of the jobs that I do do after everyone's gone is it's emptying the vans out. And it really is. It's a, not a full-time job, but it's making sure all the vans are kitted and loaded and everything is ready for all the guys on Monday morning. And like, I don't think about it when I do it. I'm just quite happy to get on with it. But this is one of the things that all the rubbish comes out. And you could argue, well, actually, that's their job to do it. But we made the agreement everybody leaves early on a Friday. It's just a Friday thing now. We, we call it time at, so I think, 12 or 1 o'clock. And I stay here till 6, 7 o'clock just going through all of these bits. So rubbish is the first thing. I'm trying to give you as much of an insight into what happens behind the scenes and like all of this sort of stuff, just the stuff which is really important because people overlook this sort of stuff and it's vitally important. So all of this, this is all just crap which has been, this is just all stuff which has got to be sorted. So I just segregate this all into the bins. I can't tell you how nice it is to have bins, you know. We've all been there. The days of when you're trying to put all your commercial waste into your domestic bins. Spent years doing it. Got one of those hats for the highways work with the um, drop pull down visor. They're such nice hats, but nearly a hundred quid. Then there'll be all the other bits and pieces, like breakers. We always used to throw them away because there's just, I never had room to store them. But now, obviously, we've got plenty of space. You can make real money just by keeping, <coughs> excuse me, by keeping old breakers. So every time the boys do a board change, I'll just tell them, keep, throw the board away, throw all the guts of the board away into the bins outside, but keep the breakers because they're really worth money. So yeah, all the lesser things people don't think about, all the stuff like this, just making sure all of this stuff is done. But it's quite a little collection now, and it's really handy having shelves full of just the old, some of the obsolete breakers or just stuff, you know, it is handy to have and it really does help when you're doing work because sometimes, you know what it's like, you come across like a Crabtree, the older style Crabtree RCBOs, just stuff which is handy to have and if you know you're working on a job where you might need one just to take it with you yeah it's little things like james dropped those the other day on a job and he just put those in the drawer and i get it in a hurry to get home which is fine but this it's just i know it sounds stupid but it's all the little bits like this trying to keep make sure everything make sure all the vans have got blue roll make sure they've all got screen wash make sure the tires are all pumped up just all the sort of little drossy bits which are really easy to forget uh, the Duke is now fixed, by the way. That is now, it should start all being well. We put a new battery on it and new starter cables because they have the ridiculously small starter cables. It should. So I have, that's why motor vlogs haven't happened. She starts. I mean, she stalled, but she starts. So she's running now. So motor vlogs will be coming soon again. I suppose one of the, I, I think the hidden... I mean, not a hidden, it's not even an advantage. I don't really know how you'd explain it, but like, once, because uh, today's Friday, and once everybody's left, like James, Joe, Sarah, V, uh, you know, it's just me and the camera guy left here. But normally, if I'm just on my own, I do, I do like just to sort of stand here. Once I've finished everything and all the vans are cleaned, they're polished, and everything's been, you know, they've all been kitted out, they're all ready for Monday morning, and you've got just like five minutes of peace, I do like to just grab a coffee and I just sort of stand here on this little platform. It's nice just to look at what, what you've achieved, you know? It's nice. If that, I don't even know how well that's making any sense, but it is nice to look at what you, what, you know, you've actually got something physically that you can see that you've achieved, you know? It is nice. It does give you a, a will to, you know, to go into Monday morning with a, you know, with a bang sort of thing. It is, it is sat satisfying, that's the word. It's very, it is a very satisfying feeling, seeing, seeing it sort of come together, you know? Day two. Okay, here we go. Vehicle servicing in progress. Team Naji, welcome. Right, this van's going in for a service. Well, it's here, I'm gonna do it. This one is on 24,000. I do them every, I do them every 10,000. The book actually says it's much longer than that, but I just like to do them every 10,000. This one's due for it and so is the other one. And then when that one's done, the Kangoo's gotta come in for a ball joint, but I'm basically a full-time mechanic. I'm a full-time of everything at the moment. So let me get set up. Let me get the pans and everything set up and we're back in a sec. Tea, coffee, oil and filter change. I haven't bought the ramp yet. I think, it's only a possible, I mean, it's not confirmed, but I think if I was to spend 2,000 quid on a ramp now, I've got a feeling there may be anarchy in the office. So I'm, I don't know. I might just do it on a credit card and not say anything. We'll see. I mean, you could argue why it's the CEO of the company servicing the vans, but you know, needs must and all that, hey? <laughs> okay, there's one. 
There we go. All right. Oh, this fucking, this carry on. I remember this. There we go. Yeah, she's done 24,000. So uh, 24, 25,000. Yeah, she's just gone through, well, the other van, you saw the other van, that went through its first set of brake. Oh, has that content gone out yet? The one with the brake pads. It would probably have gone out by the time this video goes out. The brake pads have both been done on these. Um, so the brake pads on the, on the works van, like this is my own van, but I call that one the, the company van, if you will. That one's done 20, yeah, 25,000 on a set of brake pads. So I don't know, for stop, start, town driving, I guess that's about average. I don't know. I've got my filter key set and one of the keys is missing. I'll put any money, the key that's missing is the one for this van. Yeah, there we are. Okay, brilliant. That's what we want there. That's our sump. Here we fucking go. This is the next problem. <laughs> I fucking know it. <laughs> you fucking bastard. None of them fit. I swear to God, I could fall into a barrel of tits and still come out sucking my thumb. Off to uh, Euro car parts. Excellent. Yeah, fucking. I walked in, it's like, what do you need, Tom? I'm guessing he's a subscriber. Thank you, Mr. Halford, whoever you are. Four pound for a new drain plug. Excellent. All right, let's go back to the unit and see if, see if that one fits. It's an eight mil drain plug, so I think that was the one. Ah, fits like a glove. Right. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, it is advisable don't do this with like on a hot engine because that will just <laughs> that will just melt the skin off your hands. This was hot, but it cooled down a good hour and a half ago. You won't feel a thing, madam. It will be over before you know it. All right, that's still having a pee. So, oil filter. Let's have a little dig under here and see. Right, there it is. If I remember rightly, that it was either a 22 or a 27 mil socket. Is having a pee all over me. Excellent. Dump that in there for a minute. Right. That's clean. All we need now is the new filter. A few inches later. So a fuel filter. They're my arch enemy. I hate changing fuel filters. But this one's due because I didn't do it last time. So I do it every other every every other oil change. In. New rubber seal on. Excellent. Right. That can go back on. Okay, that's as tight as I dare go. A brake cleaner, just for good measure. Lovely. That's better. Now the van's clean. I'm covered in shit now, but the van's clean. Right. That's now done. Sump plug. Where's that gone? Sump plug can go back in. There's a guy called, you know, Project Farm. And he does like, he's done all sorts of, it's actually really interesting. He's done all sorts of tests on all different sorts of products. And one of them was engine oil. I would be interested to send that oil off for analysis. I don't even know where you go to do that though. Send a sample of it off for analysis and find out actually how good is that oil. It's done 12,000 miles in this van, but 12,000 miles of heavy urban driving. It'd just be interesting to see, is it still of the same grade as when it went in? Is it still, does it still have the same amount of protective properties as it did when it went in? Because I'm not convinced it does, but it would be interesting to see. It's as tight as I dare go. Sort of hand tight and then like a smidge more. I think it's eight liters that go in this from memory. This is the moment I realize I've not put the oil filter in. I have done that before. In my raised to service a vehicle, I've poured it in, five liters come out on the floor. I've done that before. Or is it more, more speed, less haste or something? Uh, apparently people were saying that 530 isn't the correct grade for this van. I've checked. In fact, hang on. Yeah, 530. I mean, they use ELF. That's just a little supplementary pack which comes with the van. They use ELF low saps 530. This is a 530 low saps, but the service interval on this van is every two years or 30,000 miles. I mean, it's, it's nuts, for just saying to the camera, it's nuts when you think about it. It really is. And the new, I think the latest Renault traffic, or is it the Mercedes Sprinter? It's a 50,000 mile service interval. So you haven't got to change the oil in 50. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how the boffins, how they calculate that, but they must, they must have the stats and, you know, engineers have, they've very carefully calculated it and they've worked out that it is possible. But well, the problem is, you know, people, when they buy the van, once it's over three years old, it's no longer, you know, under main dealer warranty and then people start, the pro people will then put this sort of oil in and they'll still change it every 50,000 and this oil was not designed to, to, to be changed every 50,000. 
if you want the 50,000 mile protection, you've got to use, you know, Mercedes grade oil or whatever. You have to use their oil to, you know, to get that sort of mileage. But people put the cheapest shit in they can find and they expect it to do 50,000. And when you ask them, oh, I've changed it, yeah, yeah. But actually, they've just put the cheapest stuff in. Which is fine if, you do, if you're changing every 10,000 or 12,000 like I am, it's all right. I would be intrigued to know actually what's the difference between this oil and like premium oil that are both, you know, low saps, 530. I would be interested to know. I'm, pro I'm guessing that Project Farm fellow has probably done, he's probably done a test on it most likely. I just haven't looked it up. Yeah, it becomes like a full-time job. Not a full-time job, but you could easily see when you start to expand and of course, this is all learning. I, I don't know any of this. I'm just learning it all as I go along, you know, just making mistakes. But I could totally see as you grow, like you would need somebody in here full time doing, you know, keeping the stores clean and tidy. Me and Sarah, Sarah and me have already spoken about this. Somebody in here on the stores, keeping all the stores tidy, maintaining the vehicles, having service schedules. OK, this van's due in next week for a six week checkup, you know, and you have that structure and a, a process in place. Vanita will love that. I said the word process on cam. She, she loves a good process. I'm sure it turns her on. That is exactly halfway. Perfect. Well, I'm sure when I turn it on, the filter will swallow a bit of that up. Right. Okay. Fuel filter. I am not looking forward to that because I don't even know where it is. I've never changed it on this van. Uh, I'm fettling where I shouldn't be fettling. The back one is the green jet. Oh dear. Right. right. <laughs> Now I've committed myself to something, I better see it through. I can hear glugging of fuel leaving these pipes. Oh well. I'm a firm believer for anybody thinking, why don't you just give it to a garage? As I've said in many times in my videos, the best way to do something is just to, just to do it and learn. I changed fuel fields in the past, but not on this particular van. And I also notice there's no, there's no priming pump you know you get those air pumps next to it there isn't one on this so i don't know whether it's self priming or i don't know i just know that every time you put a fuel filter back on vans they just never start perfectly you've always got a crank 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 fucking hell yeah that, that was due for a change wow so that one can just be binned now so this is the replacement filter you watch it trying to start this van <laughs> place your bets <laughs> How many times do you think we're going to have to crank it? I'm going with about four hours before we get it started. But I also don't care. Like, this is learning. I'm a firm ambassador of just, if you don't know something, just, just get stuck in, figure it out, learn, make mistakes. And Thomas Nagy, car pro. Just like the camera the guy says, do, it's doing the trick. I know they do say you shouldn't put the old fuel back in, but I'm just going to, I'm not going to put all of it back in all the dirt to the very bottom. I mean, you can see the dirt that it's, it's actually caught quite a lot and the filter is absolutely, the old filter is stinking. Right, that's ready to be refitted. Here we go. I'm sure garages must have a workaround for this. Like when you take it into runner, they probably have a device they, I'm sure they have a device they fit on to stop the air going back to the tank and stuff. They must have, because there's no bleed. I can't see any primer. Every vehicle I've ever worked on has had a primer. Let's uh, start her up and see. The problem is it's electronic start. It's, it's, uh, it's not like a key. Key, yeah, keys are out there, that's okay. Oh, it's pissing, it's pissing, it's pissing, it's pissing, turn off. I can't. Like Holy shit. It is pissing like crazy. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, cocky Nora. Okay, so what went wrong there? What the hell, ha what have these come off? All right, well, at least we know it's trying to self-prime. It's not those. Those are absolutely tied in. Got to be something up there, which I missed. Maybe like the, when, when we were pushing it back in. Yeah, the seal kind of I think we've damaged something. that seal. Yeah, yeah. it's the seal we've damaged. Yeah, it's that seal. All right. Okay, well, at least we know what it is now. Yeah. Can you see something? Yeah, you can see where I caught it. There on the edge, see? Yeah, that's all. That's all. I've just caught it there. Well, it's right there. I've got to take that seal off. I'm going to need the cameraman's hand, so we're going to come back in a second. Six and a half hours later. Right. All right, let's see if that works now. Well, at least we know it primes quickly. Is it going to take a piss all over my warehouse floor again? <laughs> I 
Thomas Nagy, mechanic, bring your vehicles here for a complete service and free tea and muffins. Okay, so clearly it's self-priming. I didn't know that. I'm going to open the door to the warehouse before we get carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, let us have a little clear up and we're back in a sec. It's not too bad. It's done 12, well, it's about 10, 12,000 miles out of fill was done. It's not bad. I mean, all right, it's discolored, but it's not, not horrendous, I don't think. In you go to your new home. Lovely. See you in 12,000 miles. Brings back memories of my younger youth. <laughs> Just get underneath trucks and stuff. Absolutely covered, stinking of diesel. Some of the shit I used to really, it's actually scary that I drove those vehicles. I had a Shogun. It was a, uh, it was, a, it, was the old, it was the older model, 2.5 turbo diesel, long wheelbase, slow as fuck. Powerful, but slow. Took it off-roading once, and I can't remember what happened. The front right-hand brake caliper seized. I can't remember what it was. I, I screwed, that was it, the caliper, that was it now, yeah. Brake pads worn away, piston hit the disc, and of course it just, it just completely disintegrates, it destroys itself. And I was like, ooh, this was on a Sunday, obviously. And I was like, well, I didn't have time to go to Euro Car Parts to get a new disc pad and a new caliper. And because the caliper, the piston, the bore of the piston was just shot. So I just took the wheel off, took the caliper off, and uh, I just unscrewed the caliper, threw it away, and I got one of those brake hose clamps. I just clamped in. I was like, well, I can just stay there for a few days until I can order the bits for it. I was driving up the motorway, I had three brakes, you know. I asked went a bit when you had to do an emergency stop, but you don't think you don't think of the consequences when you're young. You just do these things. You don't think of them, you know. I was, I was driving up the M4 going into Bristol because that's where I was posted in this truck covered in mud and shit. I had three brakes. I think if the police pulled me over, I'd have lost my license. I mean, looking at it back then, I'd have, I'd have probably lost my license, but that's the, that's the advantages of age, you know? It's the same as what people say on here. Like, it's not my opinions have changed. I've just got older and it's just, that's just what happens when you get older. You get more conscious of safety, you know? So, <laughs> youth. I had a Suzuki once. It was a little, it was a five door Vitara. It was one of my first cars I had and I bought it cheap. It was like 1500 quid. It was just a cheap runabout. It always had this problem from day one when I bought it. I'm sure the guy who sold it to me knew about it. He just didn't want to, he just didn't know. He just didn't want it. He couldn't fix it. So it palms it off on me. And when you were driving along, I just, I still don't, it bugs, it really irritates me. When you were driving along, it would just cut out. It would just start stalling. And I just, it would just, it was like it just ran out of fuel. It would just, it would literally start stalling. I tried everything. I tried all the, I mean, back then my mechanical knowledge wasn't that great, I, but I tried everything I could think of. You know, I tried, it was back in the days where you had, you know, dizzy caps, rotor arms, all that sort of stuff. So I was like, okay, try the simple stuff, you know, spark plugs, you know, HTV spark plugs, dizzy cap rotor you know rotor blades try all the simple stuff rotor arm sorry didn't make a shit of difference still did it and in the end i was like fuck this i just sold it and i said i just sold it in a car auction i got 1600 pound for it i paid 15 sold it for 1600 so yeah somebody else that's a legacy issue with that car so somebody else inherited that problem never got to the bottom of it I wish I, I wish i knew what it was and it still bugs me to this day i, I just don't know absolutely no idea what it was you ever have a Vitara had that problem? Put it below. I never, I never found out what it was. Maybe the next owner found out, I don't know. Done. I've got one more van to do, exactly the same job again. Then the Kang has got to come in for a ball joint and then when that one's done, I think both, I've got a set of pads for both these ones. Pads on the backs so have both got to be done, but that can wait for, it's not urgent, but it can wait for another, another time.